Good afternoon. I'm calling to order our regularly scheduled meeting of the Intergovernmental Relations Committee. My name is Elizabeth Glidden. I'm the chair of this committee. And I'm joined today by Council Members Quincy Fry and Andrew Johnson. We are a quorum of this committee. We have um, three items on our agenda today. And uh, so we will just call them up in order. The first item is uh, regarding our federal representation services. So I'll invite up Mr. Ranieri to give us an overview of this item. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. My name is Gene Ranieri. I'm the Director of Government Relations for the city. Uh, we did have a three-year contract with Fagery, Fagery BD Consulting. Uh, we did go out with an RFP. We developed an RFP. It was approved by the Permanent Review Committee. Uh, was, we had five responses. A review team of the city uh, went through those responses. Three of the firms really don't have a lot of experience with federal uh, with cities. They were mostly in the healthcare field and communications. And the, the other firm uh, had conflicts with other cities. There were many other cities, our peer cities. Uh, we agreed to recommend a Fagri BD for one year at a reduced amount uh, of 96,000 instead of 120. Uh, we also are recommending that we reevaluate the process again next year because to be very frank, not very much is happening in Washington. <laughs> And we need to just be watch that and watch that. Uh, BD, for Fagri BD will be working. Uh, we've asked them to work more carefully and more, uh, more, more diligently in the area of the federal executive actions. Uh, there's not a lot going on legislatively, so we're asking them to continue to work on things like the Promise Zone, uh, body cams, grants. Lots of new federal regulations are coming in the area of aviation, also in transportation. So those areas, we also, they're gonna be visiting with us once quarterly here in the city to go over and meet with us to discuss what's good happening. So that's the differences and uh, that's a quick summary. All right, well, thank you very much for that report. Um, for the sake of discussion, I'm gonna go ahead and move. There are actually two items connected with this action. The first is to receive and file the ethics officer report, which is required any time that we um, uh, have a contract uh, with lobbyists of these type. And so this would be to receive and file that report. And then the second item would be uh, uh, to authorize a contract for $97,600 for the period of August 1st, 2015 to July 31st, 2016. And uh, that contract amount is $23,400 or 19.5% below the contract amount. So I will go ahead and move this action item with both of those subparts, discussion on the item. Not seeing any, so all in approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And that item is approved. Next, we have uh, another discussion item, which is the city of Minneapolis's proposed comments on Excel Energy's 2016-2030 resource plan. And I will just note that um, after we take action in our committee, the next step for this would be to refer it to the Health, Environment, and Community Engagement Committee, which is the policy committee uh, for these types of issues. So. We have Mr. Brendan Slaughterback here. Mr. Slaughterback. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Um, Brendan Slaughterback from the Sustainability Office here at the city. Um, I do have some slides today um, to go over with you to introduce you a little bit to the resource plan that Excel has filed, talk about some of the key issues that um, we believe uh, the city should address as part of the comment period um, and provide a little bit of background about um, Excel's filing. Um, so just briefly, um, in case you're not familiar what integrated resource planning is, um, basically this is a, a long-term planning tool that all uh, electric utilities in the state of Minnesota are required to use um, to identify what their customer needs will be and then tell the Public Utilities Commission how they'll meet those needs, both in terms of capacity, so how much, how many generating units they have, but also the total energy, the amount of electricity that they need to produce. Um, state law in Minnesota says it must be an integrated resource plan, and to them, integrated means they need to use both supply and demand side resources in their plan. So that means um, supply in terms of, you know, if, if people need more electricity, they will build more plants to produce electricity, and demand side meaning how can we implement energy efficiency measures to reduce 
uh, the need for those units that we might need to otherwise build. Um, by statute, these plans are supposed to be filed every two years with the Public Utilities Commission, but in practice, that tends to dry out because uh, it takes actually sometimes multiple years for the Utility Commission to even approve a plan. So um, in practice, it sometimes takes a little bit longer. And then uh, obviously, finally, the, the ultimate decision maker for the plan um, is the Public Utilities Commission. So uh, in this case, the city and many other parties are going to be submitting comments, but the, the PUC is really the the ultimate uh, authority. Um, so Excel has filed a plan for the 15 year period from 2015 to 2030. Um, uh, we know that this plan will have an impact on the city's adopted climate action and clean energy partnership goals. Um, the When the council considered the energy pathways study uh, over a year ago, uh, the in addition to recommending the formation of the partnership, which we now have with Excel and CenterPoint. Um, uh, also a key point in that study was that the city needs to continue its work in the regulatory arena at the state because ultimately the buck does stop with the Public Utilities Commission. Um, in addition, the council considered and adopted on August 21st some energy and climate policy positions. Um, one of the items in those positions um, for the next uh, year period was the integrated resource plan. We saw that coming up as an item, so that was um, included uh, and adopted by council as something we should comment on. Um, just briefly to give you some sense of the scope here, uh, this is the chart of Minneapolis's overall greenhouse gas emissions um, from citywide activities. Uh, the blue bars that you see at the bottom um, are the emissions from the use of electricity in the city. Those are about 40% of the total emissions from uh, from the city as a whole. So the electricity piece of our emissions pie really has a significant impact on our on our overall goals. Um, we have made a lot of progress since 2006, uh, about a little over 9% reduction in emissions. Um, we think that about 50% of the reason for that reduction is that we're getting our electricity from cleaner sources. So again, what Excel does with their system has um, significant impacts on our goals. Thank you, Mr. Slaubeck. We have a question from President Johnson. Mr. Slaubeck, not to interrupt you, but I'm just curious on, on the components of greenhouse gases. Um, how does, how do, you, how do you get greenhouse gases, and I'm to be educated, <laughs> uh, out of wastewater and solid waste? Sure. Um, well, there are some emissions that come from the processing of wastewater that actually happens outside of the city at the Metro Wastewater okay. Treatment Facility. Uh -huh. And we get some data from the Met Council on how much Minneapolis actually contributes. So what's contributes. our contribution yep. to that? Yep. Okay, okay. And then solid waste is probably from? That's um, things that we throw away. So in, things we send herd. to landfill or, or to herd. herd. Okay. Yeah. Great, thank you very much. Um, so some major issues that we've identified in this uh, resource plan um, obviously, as I talked about the energy resource mix and the overall emissions, um, one of the big issues in this plan is the future of the Sherburne County generating units one and two, um, uh, which I may call SHRCO in the future. Um, this plan also, again, the demand side issue. So the goals that the utility has for energy efficiency um, at the service territory level are what they're tackling in this plan, but that really has an impact on what we're trying to do locally. Um, rate impacts, obviously this plan has um, electric bill rate impacts and public health impacts. Um, an important note, uh, any entity can actually submit a resource plan for Excel. And in this case, two entities did submit alternative plans that the commission has to consider equally with Excel's plan. Um, the Department of Commerce Division of Energy Resources submitted a plan and then a group of clean energy organizations in the state um, submitted their own plan as well. And both completed the, the full kind of modeling that they need to do to show how their plans stack up versus Excel's plan. Um, the, the difference in these plans really revolve around a few things, um, a few big things. Really, again, how they treat uh, the future of those SHRCO units, um, the energy efficiency goals, and then there's some information about modeled cost that's sort of different in those plans. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about some of those things in my comments coming up. But our comments that you see in draft before you do reference 
some things that are called out in those alternative plans. So I just wanted to uh, make you aware of that. Um, so a little bit, uh, uh, the next few slides are a little bit about what's in Excel's plan that they've actually proposed to the PUC. Um, so significantly, I think on the positive side, Excel has proposed significant additions of renewable energy uh, reduction in coal use over the next 15 years. Um, these uh, pie charts here show you the kind of current energy mix that they have and then the future planned uh, that they're proposing um, through their, their resource plan. Um, one of the alternative plans submitted by the clean energy organizations uh, takes some issue with whether this is this actually results in what Excel uh, says it does, but this is what's proposed in Excel's plan. So you can see additions of wind uh, and solar pretty significantly to their system over the next um, 15 years. Excel's also proposed um, energy efficiency goals, actually two different rates for two sections of the 15 year plan. Uh, one and a half percent, which is what they're at now um, for the first piece of the plan. And then beyond 2022, uh, they suggest that they step their goal down to 1.3%. Uh, and just for your reference, there's a goal in state law that electric utilities should hit one and a half percent um, annual energy efficiency um, electric utilities. So they're actually proposing uh, the, the commissioner can approve something lower than one and a half percent, but the state law goal is is one and a half percent. There there isn't a great deal of information, detailed information in the plan yet about rate impacts. Um, they have uh, this is kind of a, a little bit hard to read. I apologize, it's pulled from the plan, but. They do have a little bit of information about incremental rate impacts, uh, but they've said that they're gonna be supplying more because a lot of the commenters have asked specifically, uh, broken out by customer type. They, this is all customers lumped together in sort of an average. It does show a lot of the rate impacts will be, there won't be significant rate impacts in the near term, but there'll be more in the out years, so beyond 2020 and 2025. But a lot of people are interested in the comment period about what happens for each type of customer, residential versus commercial versus industrial. So we hope there'll be more information on that coming out soon. Um, total greenhouse gas emissions, this is the again, the modeled results that Excel has produced. They're saying their overall whole system for, this includes not just Minnesota, but parts of Wisconsin and Michigan um, uh, would reduce, this plan would reduce their emissions about 42% from 2005 baseline. The blue line is represents their previous plan. So you can see they've taken a significantly different tack than, than their previous plan. Um, and they're, they're modeling um, pretty significant reductions over 15 years. Uh, criteria pollutants, the items that basically affect air quality directly or health, um, they are projecting some reductions. Um, they've done a lot of work in the past to reduce these. So the reduction between now and 2030 isn't as significant as since 2005, but there will continue to be um, declines. Um, the next few slides are kind of summaries of what is before you in the comments. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to go through these and summarize some of the key pieces that are in, in the letter that we'll be uh, submitting to the PUC. Um, we do wanna recognize obviously in these comments that Excel and the city are partners uh, in the clean energy partnership that we're working together to pursue state goals. Um, we discuss in the, in the comments that there is significant energy savings potential in the city. We think that there is based on some of the work that we've done. Um, but we stress that uh, we think that adopting an energy savings goal at least one and a half percent, if not higher, might be appropriate given some of the comments that are in the alternative plans that have submitted some of the information about Excel's success with energy efficiency programs. So we're saying to the commission, 1.3% that Excel's proposed for those out years is, is not, probably not appropriate. So we have a question here before you turn to another yep. slide, council member Johnson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Would you please go back to the slide on rates for me? So I just wanted to look at this and confirm. So it looks like we are effectively almost tripling, is that correct? Tripling from 2020 to 2025? The rate is the well, the, expected. This, this graph shows um, the incremental, so annual impact on rates per kilowatt hour. So this is actually okay. in, in 2020, um, it's, you know, it's 
tens of thousands of a penny per kilowatt hour. So it's uh, it's it's adding to the current cost of kilowatt hours. Gotcha. So it's not total. It's just the incremental. Right. Gotcha. All right. right. I just want to confirm that. Thank yep. you. And we have another question from Councilmember Fry. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for all your work, uh, Mr. Slarback. Um, quick question regarding the use of solar, specifically under major solar developers. If if a major solar developer puts up a, a develops the whole solar plan and then it co-locates several of those and then transfers the energy back onto the grid, does that, I mean, seemingly that energy would still have to go through the <coughs> cell's system. Does that count towards their percentage that we saw? Uh, I think it was 8% where they're presently at. Um, yeah. The, uh, the answer is usually yes, um, but it can depend. Um, usually what happens is that Excel does count that solar as part of their overall mix. Um, the, you know, the way of renewable energy is tracked is through something called renewable energy credits. Right. And usually the developer will sell those or Excel will get those credits so they can count the solar as theirs. There can be situations when the developer or the people who are buying the energy keep those and then Excel does not count that. But typically the way it works is that Excel gets to count that as part of their um, their overall pie. Okay, so the, the capital is invested by another private entity and then Excel gets to use the credits towards their overall count. Correct. But the, usually the developer does get a, there's, there's a monetary reward for turning over those, those credits. Okay. Um, in the case of community solar, um, I'd have to follow up with you on the details, but in the case of community solar, for example, there is a monetary difference between whether you keep those yourself or whether you give them to Excel. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Um, the uh, moving on, another group of our comments. Um, we looked at the carbon intensity again that was sort of planned over that 15-year period and then looked at our long-term climate goals, so a 30% um, reduction by 2025. Um, they are proposing, again, significant reductions. We think if they can meet those targets, that they will uh, help us significantly to meet our, our uh, climate goals. Um, but we do think that there are greater reductions that may be possible, especially when we looked at the alternative plans that were submitted by the uh, Department of Commerce and the Clean Energy Organizations, uh, there seems to be very little uh, cost difference between some of these deeper carbon reductions that the alternative plans are proposing and what Excel is proposing. So in our comments, we're asking the commission to look carefully at those and if there can be deeper carbon reductions, um, that, that that be the preference. Early, um, early and rapid action on those carbon reductions is important. Um, we believe uh, that, or we say in these comments that the resource plan should provide some certainty about what's going to happen with those two SHRCO units. So the current Excel plan basically shows them operating beyond 2030, beyond the current planning horizon, um, but sort of ramping them down over time. Um, the clean energy organizations have asked that they be, uh, that units one and two either be retired or repowered. The Department of Commerce has suggested that one of them be repowered by natural gas, um, but uh, there is a lot of work to do in the comments. It's clear that there's a lot of work to do to do something with those units. So we're asking there needs to be some certainty for all the stakeholders involved uh, in what happens with those two units. Um, we do say in the comments we think that Excel is kind of underestimating the demand for solar resources in particular by customers. Um, particularly in the in the realm of community solar, uh, their planned amount is going to be uh, effectively used up in very few years. Even though th this is supposed to be a 15-year um, planning period, so we want them to reflect that in the plan. Um, we think there's a lot of demand in Minneapolis and and beyond for uh, renewable energy sources, um, more options for customers to interact with the with the electric utility. Um, a lot of the new resources that Excel is planning are actually going to come online, they're saying, after 2025. And we're saying people are demanding these things now, and so we shouldn't wait beyond that horizon to uh, put those into the plan. 
Uh, and then finally, um, you know, this plan goes to 2030. Um, our climate action goals go out to 2050. Um, state statute actually says Excel should, should think about 2050 in their resource planning. So this is kind of just a general comment about we want to continue to work with Excel. We want to work with the Department of Commerce, figure out what those long-term strategies are. It's going to be a major challenge to hit the 80% reduction goal. And so what do we need to do to um, start working on that now um, so that we're not caught off guard in 2020 or 2030 to try to meet those really aggressive targets? Um, again, uh, Madam Chair, as you mentioned, the next step in this is refer to HECE. Uh, I did want to just note that the comment deadline for uh, this period in the plan is October 2nd. Um, we've been talking to folks in the community and our community environmental advisory committee. They can continue to comment on this up until October 2nd and the PUC does have a mechanism uh, on their website with which they can do that. So um, we're getting the word out about that. Um, that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Are there additional questions for Mr. Slaughterback? I'm not seeing any. So um, with that, um, and I apologize, our action is to approve the comments, I believe. Is that right? Approve the comments, and then we're going to refer it to the additional committee, right? Correct. Okay. So um, I'll move then to approve these comments and send you on your way to HECE and uh, for additional feedback from that committee. Discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> and that item is approved. And thank you so much for a detailed presentation on what we know is a really important topic. So thank you very much. We have one final uh, item on our agenda for today, and this is our regularly occurring item of uh, federal, state, and local legislative updates. So, Mr. Ranieri, are there some items for presentation and discussion today? Madam Chair, there are items for presentation and discussion. One is at the federal level. Uh, 13 days from now, the federal fiscal year ends and the new one begins. Unfortunately, Congress has not passed a budget. There is some concern there could be a shutdown over the Planned Parenthood issues. It's probable that there will be a short-term continuing resolution again. And then when Congress comes back after in November, possibly uh, making it more long-term. So lots of uncertainty at the federal level in terms of the budget. Uh, for the cities and for uh, all the projects we work on, I think a short, if there is a shutdown, if it's short, we should be okay. But overall, a lot of folks, particularly the Senate, are, don't want to do a shutdown. There seems to be some concern in the House between among the caucus, between the caucus members on the, on the majority. And uh, there's concern that possibly they will shut down. There's also a possibility that there could be a leadership change too. So it's a little uncertain in the House of Representatives. Also, on, mo and on Monday, the President announced some initiatives uh, in the whole area of smart cities. He has uh, been able to uh, have some national foundations, some appropriations to provide funding for things that doing with transportation, uh, things like lighting, heating, things of those, those nature. None of the RFQs or RFPs are out. One of the things that impacts our city and the city of St. Paul and the University of Minnesota is an announcement that there'll be some funding available for cities and their universities to do some work together on some projects in their cities. University of Minnesota and our city and St. Paul are one of the participants of the 20 cities and universities across the country. I'm not exactly sure what is the details of that yet, but we will be working with the U and our city staff here to find what some of those projects may be. There's not a lot of money in this, but it's really to try and foster the university and cities working together. Madam Chair, that's at the federal level. There's not very much there. Okay. Thank at, you. The state, at the state level, the first of the bonding tours is on Tuesday. It will be uh, with the staff of the Ma Management and Budget Office of the state and some of the governor's staff. It's, I think, a half a day tour. It will be us and the county. Uh, and I think Ms. Lesh has gotten agendas hopefully out to everyone. I think it's been finalized. There's also a tour scheduled for October 14th and December, 20, December 15th. The October 14th tour is with the House that will include the University of Minnesota and our normal partners, the Park Board and the County. And in December, the, again, this is one of those long days with the University and all of us together. And that will be the Senate. And uh, that, those agendas will be put together too. 
This week and next, the League of Minnesota Cities and Metro Cities are finishing up on their policy uh, development process. They will have uh, their policies out for distribution and review by their board and members within the next month or two. Uh, our staff's been very involved in the process and have been able to get some policies uh, that we have approved here into the league that they can work with us on in, at the Capitol. And we will have a report for you at next meeting. Uh, Sasha Bergman will report on that issue. We've worked on about eight or nine issues at the how in the excuse me in, in the League of Cities, and or next week will be the final week for Metro Cities. Uh, Madam Chair, at the Metro Council, a little quiet this week, and uh, that's the end of my report. Stand for any questions. Any questions for Mr. Ranieri? I'm not seeing any. So with that, I believe we have concluded with our business for today. Um, thank you very much, and we are adjourned.